Hello everybody, it's me again, Randy Faust uh, from Compelling for Christ Public Ministry. I'd um, like to welcome all of you here that's uh, repeat um, and those that are, this is the first time. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, my main purpose in doing this, um, number one, is to be obedient to God, but number two is I want to see souls saved, amen. I want to see Christians picked up. I want to see Christians lifted up. If you're out there and you're lost, amen, I pray that you'll listen to these messages, amen, and that you'll allow God into your heart, amen. Just allow God to t talk to you, allow God to speak to you. Um, if you're saved already, amen, I hope this can be an encouragement to you. And with that in mind, I'm going to reiterate again like I do every time. If you are a Bible-believing Christian, you need to get your tail into a local Bible-believing church, amen. You can praise God anywhere. I hear this all the time. But there's one thing. You may be able to praise Him in your home. You may be able to praise Him when you go to the ball games. You may be able to praise Him when you're at family get-togethers or you're out enjoying things. But you cannot serve and worship God without starting at the local Bible-believing church, amen. God foreordained the church, amen. God lets you know that the church is where your service begins, amen. That's where you'll get fed, amen. Um, and we're going to talk about something in John chapter 6. Jesus had church, amen. He had church right there. Um, we're going to start reading this. Um, the Bible says in verse 1, it says, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, that were diseased. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there sat he. And then there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now he asked him that question. Um, he already knew the answer. He wasn't asked because he didn't know what to do. Amen. Don't be deceived in thinking that. We find that out in this next verse. Amen. Ver next verse. Amen. You want to understand the Bible, you need to understand that it defines itself, amen. Um, and here's what it says. And he said to prove, he said this, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Just exactly what it said, amen. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Hey Amen. Boy, don't that sound like us. Um, and Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was so much grass, now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. It's five thousand men, amen. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, as he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Amen. All right. I want to talk to you today about this little lad. Amen. I want to talk to you today about that basket and what he had in that basket. Now, we know he had two fish. We, we know he had five barley loaves of bread. But there's something a little deeper in what he had in this in his basket. Amen. And that's what I want to tell you about today. I want to ask you a question before we get beginning, before we start here. What's in your basket today, Christian? What do you have in your basket that you're willing to give over to God? Amen. What is it? Time? Um, is it money? Um, is it your heart? Amen. Is it your desires? Amen. The Bible says, delight thyself also in the, in the ways of the Lord. He'll give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. You start trusting in God, your desire is going to change. Amen. But if you've got something in that basket you want to hand over to him, he will take it and he will use it. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about today. We know he had two fish. We know he had five barley loaves of bread. But I want to tell you something else that was a little deeper than that. He had charity in that basket. Number one, he had charity. Amen. When he looked around, he seen all these people and that they did not have any food. And he looked into his little basket and he said, oh, I got two fish. I got five barley loaves of bread. Boy, that ain't much. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. Amen. I'm going to give it to him. You ever met somebody that would give the shirt off their back for somebody? You ever met somebody that would be in a snowstorm and they'd take their shoes off and give it to somebody that doesn't have shoes? That's the kind of heart this little boy had. Amen. And that's the kind of heart as Christians we need to have. We need to be willing to give of ourselves to help somebody else out. And I'm not talking about giving cash and all that stuff all the time. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about your heart. Amen. I'm talking about giving up something for somebody else in an effort to lift up Jesus Christ. Amen. In an effort to lift up Jesus Jesus Christ, not yourself, not to say this is what I've done, I'm so great, but to say I'm doing this, this is what Jesus wants me to do. Jesus said that I need to have charity, amen, and I'm going to give until it hurts, amen. Charity is something that uh, we get as a gift from God. 
when we get saved, amen. And it's charity, not for any worldly gain. It's just plain charity. It's love, amen. Uh, one part of the Bible, uh, the word the word that's translated into charity in some parts translated into love, amen. You can't have a charitable heart without love in your heart. And you can't have love in your heart without the Spirit of God in it, amen. This little boy had charity. Second thing I want to talk to you about this little boy had, he had faith, amen. He looked around and seen all these people going hungry, and then he looked at Jesus, amen. He walked up to Jesus, tugged on Jesus' cape, and he looked up and he said, Mr. Jesus, uh, all I got is two fish and five barrel loaves of bread, but I'm, I'm going to give it to you because I know you can do something with it. I know that you can make something out of nothing, amen. I know you created the world. I know you created the universe. I know you created all the animals, you created man and all the things that are in it and everything that... Uh, I know you can surely take these two fishes and these five barley loaves of bread, and I know you can feed all these people. That little boy had faith, amen. That little boy had faith that would move mountains. That little boy had faith as a child, amen. The Bible says we need to come to God as a child, amen. Not corrupted with the things of this world. Not corrupted with the philosophy that we learn through the schools and we learn in the workplace, that we learn through our, our relatives and our friends. But we need to come to God with the, the heart of a child, amen. Faith of a child, I got kids, and I know when, when, when they're little, sometimes they just look up to you knowing that you can do what they need you to do, amen. They don't question it. We ought not to be questioning God when it comes to matters of faith and heart, amen. This little, this little boy had faith knowing that God could take what he had, what little it was, and give it to those people and do what needs to be done, amen. He just tugged on that cape of Jesus. He just tugged on Jesus' robe, and he said, Mr. Jesus, here, take this, amen. What do you have in your basket that you're willing to give to Jesus knowing that he can make it into something good, amen? Knowing that he can make it into something great that will lift up the kingdom of God, that will lift up Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if he be lifted up, that men are going to draw nigh, amen? What are you doing as a Christian today, my Christian friend, to lift up Jesus Christ? Give him your basket today. Give him, that, give him, give him what's in it. Give him charity, amen? Give him faith, and I guarantee you, that when you start doing that, God will do something great, amen. And the third thing that little boy had in his basket was a miracle, amen. And that miracle came because he had charity in his heart, and he had faith, and he knew that when he gave it to Jesus, he can turn it into something wonderful, amen. And that's what he did. And because of that little boy, Jesus was able to perform a miracle that fed 5,000 plus, amen. The Bible says 5,000 men. Those men had families. And you read on later on in, this, in, 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 the, in the Gospels that out of those 5,000, there was about 4,000 that kept following him, amen. So because of what this little boy did, and he gave the, the, his basket to Jesus Christ, everything that he had in that basket, Jesus Christ was able to take that basket and multiply it into something grand, something that was big enough to feed all those people. Not only feed them, but feed them till they were full. They didn't just take a little niblet here and say, okay, I want to save some for the others. No, they just uh, they had a smorgasbord, amen. They had a smorgasbord of bread and fish, and they had 12 baskets baskets left over. Twelve of them, amen. After the disciples took the fragments, they had twelve baskets left over. Way more than they even began with, and everybody had a full belly, amen. Charity, faith, and then comes the miracle, amen. I want to ask you today, are you willing to give God your heart if you're lost? Are you, do you have enough faith in you? Do you have enough faith to believe that God can save your soul, no matter how wicked you are, no matter how bad you are, no matter how rich or powerful you are? The Bible says the drunk on the street and the rich in the palaces, amen. No matter who you are, all through this Bible you found out, you find out stature, none of that means anything when it comes to salvation, amen. If you've got a basket in your hand today and you're willing to give that basket of sin to Jesus Christ, he can take that basket of sin and can cover it in his blood. The Bible says all that you have to do is to ask God to save your soul, to repent. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. God loves you. God wants you to experience peace and eternity in heaven. He doesn't want you to, to, to be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. He wants you to experience peace. And you can only get that peace and you can only get that charity and you can only get that faith through him. Amen. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And that's quoted from the Old Testament. The Old Testament says the just shall live by his faith. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. He wants to give you something in return. He wants to take what little you have amen, your destination in hell, and he wants to flip that around and have your destination made in heaven, amen. Ask God to save your soul today, friend. Ask him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, amen. Just believe, ask him to save you, give him your life, amen. That's all that God has ever asked of you is just to believe that he died on the cross for your sin. 
I want you to think about that when you lay your head down at night tonight. And it's my prayer that you will not get an ounce of or a wink of sleep tonight before you go to bed. You won't get a wink of sleep while you're sleeping, a wink of sleep while you're laying down tonight until you ask God to save your soul. Think about that. You could die tonight and wake up in hell.